those policy pillars about things that matter to the American people, like lowering gas prices, getting this economy working again for people, education, securing the border, law and order. I could go down the line, but in each of these areas, we've got the policies. And now when the candidates get behind it, I'm sure they're gonna be successful. President Trump is making his first appearance in Washington, D.C. this week since leaving office. He'll give the closing address on Tuesday at the America First Conference. Could he give an indication of whether he'll run in 2024? And could Republicans take control of the House and Senate in this November's midterm elections? We're joined by the Chief Communications Officer at the America First Policy Institute, Mark Lauder. Mark, great, Mark, great to have you with us. No, thanks for having me back. Hey, look, you're, you're in the center of it all, the America First Conference this week. President Trump, tomorrow night, I'm sure he'll have a lot to say. Again, his first appearance in D.C. since leaving office. Could we get an indication, Mark, of where he is leaning in 2024? Well, technically, we are a, a 501c3 nonprofit, so uh, you know we can't get into the political aspects of uh, you know of, of the former president's future plans. But what we can talk about, and what I know and expect him to talk about, is the policy side of it. Because really, when you look at what's going on in America right now, and I don't have to tell you, I mean, it's it, it's it's just disastrous. Whether it's gas prices, inflation, uh, crime in our cities, parents being told they can't have a say in their kids' own education. I mean, this is what the left wanted. This is what they've got. What you're going to see from President Trump tomorrow and what you're seeing actually in the two days of this America First Agenda Summit are the policies that worked once before. They're going to work again. You'll see the president lay it out and then allow America First candidates, whether they're running at the local level or for Congress or eventually the White House, go out and campaign on it. You'll win. Yeah, Mark, it seems like the issues in the schools, whether it's critical race theory, the gender madness, that seems like a big winner for Republicans in November. Parents are fed up. They really are. And, you know, there have been a number of stories in the national press recently about how Democrats used to have a huge advantage over Republicans when the issue involved education. That has all but evaporated now. And it's because they have embraced this woke ideology. And I mean, who better to have control over a child's education than their own parents? I mean, that, it just it just kind of goes hand in hand that you would want to have a say in a where your child went to school and at least would like to know what they're learning and to make sure that that supports with what you believe in and you want your children uh, to be taught. So it just makes sense. But it's another example of how the left has just gone to the far extremes. And what you're going to see through the America First Policy Summit the president's remarks tomorrow afternoon is a vision forward. It's, it's, it's those policy pillars about things that matter to the American people, like lowering gas prices, getting this economy working again for people, education, securing the border, law and order. I could go down the line. But in each of these areas, we've got the policies. And now when the candidates get behind it, I'm sure they're going to be successful. Yeah, we actually have some Republicans, Mark, joining with Democrats in these January 6th hearings. Do you anticipate the Democrats have been painting this as a big victory for them and a winning issue, what happened on January 6th and the ongoing hearings? Do you see them having any impact on the November midterm elections? I don't really, because the fact of the matter is, is people go to the polls and want to talk about the future. They're voting for the future. They're not voting on the past. They're also going to be voting on the current situation, as we've said, and that's not good. So really, the Democrats' only hope right now is to try to get people upset about this 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 January 6th political theater that they've created and or their grievance politics and, and their fear tactics. You know, the one thing that really strikes me about these January 6th hearings is it's all a production. They hired a TV producer to produce the hearings. There was even a report in the, in the New York Times a few weeks ago about after the committee interviewed former White House counsel Pat Cipollone, that they had to find out how to put his sound bites into their script. They've already written their script. They're not interested in finding out facts or finding out truth. They've actually just written a script, and now they're producing TV to match it, as opposed to getting to the bottom of, of so many questions that, that we should have answered about why this, why wasn't the Capitol better protected? Why didn't they see these things coming in the first place? Now, part of the Democrat script for November, Mark, seems also to be to use what they see as an advantage for them, the Roe versus Wade ruling recently. But could that be actually a boost for Republicans, what went down at the Supreme Court last month? 
Uh, absolutely. I think the Democrats are misreading this. I think they've misread this issue for a long time. And especially now that we've already got the Dobbs decision and people realize that, no, overturning Roe v. Wade didn't end abortion. It just returned the issue to where it belonged in the first place, which is with the people's elected representatives. I mean, that was the fundamental flaw, besides the morality of it, but the fundamental flaw with Roe was that elected judges said, no, we will, unelected judges said, we will make the law. And they took away the people's right to have their elected representatives do that. Now what you see is state lawmakers, state officials having a say in this again, and the people's voices being heard through their elected representatives. And the other way the Democrats are overreading this is when you look at what they actually support. Taxpayer-funded abortion up until the moment of birth. Yeah. And that's just appalling to almost every American that a baby that could be born healthy naturally tomorrow could be killed today. Mark, we've got about 45 seconds left. Last question. Look, you're a veteran of working in Republican circles. You're at the America First Policy Conference. In the run-up to November, how do you unite how do you unite the Republican Party, different wings of the party? How do you unify everyone and bring them together? Well, I think we've got to remember what it means to be a Republican. And, and regardless of whether you are pro or anti the former president, you look at the policies that we're talking about here. Lower energy prices, tax cuts, strong economy, strong national defense, conservative judges. I mean, these are the things that Republicans have been campaigning on since the 1980s and Ronald Reagan. And if you can't get on board with these policies because you don't like the former president, then I doubt you were ever a Republican in the first place. Yeah. Mark, fascinating stuff. We will be watching very closely tomorrow night. Thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Hi, I'm Doug McElway, and thank you for watching Centerpoint. We hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Leave a comment below and keep the conversation going by sharing this video with a friend who needs to see it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.